Hello and what is going on today guys, Tomcat here and welcome back to Spin Tires Mudrunner American Wilds. Now in the last episode, we had a uh, insane time trying to get this thing loaded. It's finally loaded now and we can head down to the lumber mill. And this has been a little bit of a long time coming to be honest, but fortunately... We finally got this truck all loaded up, so um, I, for one, am very, very, very relieved to, to be on the road with a fully loaded uh, fully loaded rig. Now, if we put this thing in high... Oh, wow, it slows down a good bit. Okay, so we'll try to keep it in automatic for as much of the drive as we can. I really like this truck. I really, really do. I, I'm actually really glad it's here. I think it brings back a lot of, like, a lot of cool memories of trucks I used to see when I was a kid, but... Like, which wasn't that long ago. I mean, like, I'm 24 now. And, like, you know, trucks I used to see back when I was, like, six, seven, eight years old. I mean, I used to see these, you know, growing up in the mountains, living in the mountains. I used to see these trucks. And, like, you know, and they would have, you know, big loads of lumber on the back. So, it's really, really cool to see now uh, in the game. God, the lumber physics have definitely, I feel like they've changed a little bit because, wow, they flex a lot more now. They seem to kind of, you know flex and bob up and down a lot more than they used to so let's see if we can get through here without dealing with any sort of wheel spin or awkward stuff to, in regards to the mud at all like it's just really really close not bad though yeah not bad at all things doing a good job i mean it's hauling really really well speed limit 35 i wish we had a speedometer like, and it's funny because they're like, mile per hour. And then they give, the only reading they give is zero. So, when the only mile per hour reading they give is zero, you can, <laughs> you have nothing to base it off of. And it's literally just kind of there as this dead gauge. We have absolutely no lane discipline, no lane discipline right now. We lack discipline at the moment in regards to staying in our lane, but it's okay because it's Mud Runner and we know there's nobody coming the other way. So that's the only time I'm okay with crossing the double yellows is in, in, is in Mud Runner or any other game. <laughs> Let's see. I wish we could, like, well, sometimes I wish I could see a little bit farther, and then other times I feel like the fog is just kind of okay, and, like, I'm willing to put up with the fog, I think. But we might be able to finish that other uh, lumber mill in this episode. If we can do that, I will be very, actually very impressed. Because if we finish that, it like, if we finish the other lumber mill in this episode, then there could be a really good chance. Well, I mean, we're going to be able to progress on to the next part regardless, but... I'm really wanting to get this this map wrapped up because if I can get this map wrapped up, then we can start to get a look at that second map. And the second map has been something I've wanted to see uh, ever since I started playing the first map. And, I mean, yeah, I'm not the most patient person in the world. I will admit that 100%. But at the end of the day, I still want to see that second map. <laughs> I still want to see that second map. That second map seems really, really, really cool. And I've seen, you know, some of the, like, you know, some of the things, like, here and there that we've been able to kind of, you know, see about the map itself, Mount Longmore. But, dude, uh, I can't wait to actually, you know, play around with it myself. Coming up on the lumber mill now, or at least the turnoff for the lumber mill. It's a few corners down, but... We're getting there. I'm kind of at the point now with this map where, at least with the with the lumber hauling, I don't really have to look at, like, with the lumber hauling route, I don't really have to look at the map anymore, which is nice. But this is going to be an interesting test. Oh, that is as far as we go. Damn. Damn. That's as far as we go without the winch, boys. Wow. Should be a nice sturdy tree to winch to. Dude, wow, that thing is really, like, it's struggling a little bit. It's definitely having to work hard. It's definitely having to work really hard. Oh, that's perfect. That's in exactly the right spot. Come on, pull, 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 pull. Almost there, and you know what? Release that as well. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. That'll get us back onto the paved surface, which is what this truck needs, because apparently that's all it could do. Come on. There we go. All right, we can release. We got grip again. 
or at least some resemblance to grip. We got some slip, too, but the struggle get, will grip up a lot better once the mud kind of wears off the tires, which it'll be on there for a minute, but not long enough, again, like I said, for us to be con have to be concerned about it. Kick it up into high and then back into automatic mode. It's kind of rolling now. I almost wish that I had used the Freightliner for this because the Freightliner is even faster. But I, at the same time, don't wish I would used the Freightliner for this because the Freightliner is like, I don't know, we, we've used the Freightliner already and I, we haven't really, like we've used it for, you know, objective-based gameplay and we haven't used this for objective-based gameplay. So I kind of wanted to use the Ford and, and again, because just because I like the history of this Ford, but... Slow down a little bit for this. I don't want to dump that load. Oh! I... Wow. I felt like I slowed down enough. Apparently, I did not. I also apparently didn't see how off-camber that corner was. And I apparently paid for that. Wow. All right. Um. I wonder if the K5 can flip this thing back on its wheels. It's not really going to matter too much because... Whether or not the K5 can doesn't really matter because, like, we're still going to need something to reload the truck, but, oh, God. This is bad. Yeah, this sucks. This is one of those scenarios that you really, really, really don't want to have happen. It's not going to do it. It's... Just straight up not going to do it. It doesn't have... It doesn't have the grip. Yeah, it doesn't have the grip. So... God, what should we do? We're going to need to... Well, actually... The option... The only option is the Freightliner. And not only does it mean that we're going to have to use it to rescue that truck. But it means we're going to have to reload the damn thing. And that is the part that I'm not looking forward to. Is reloading that thing. Like, oh, we just did that in the last episode. Hopefully we can, hopefully we can do it a lot faster this time around. I feel like this time around, like, you know, it'll take like maybe like two, three minutes at max. Whereas in the last episode, it was like this massive drawn out ordeal that you like, I don't think you guys even saw the whole thing. Like, I think I cut some of it out because it was just, it took so long to do. Don't need fuel. We're not down on it at all. I mean, this thing uses one liter a minute. One to two liters a minute. That's hilarious. I mean, it doesn't have anything in it right now. But, like, well, it's at three liters a minute now. But, like, somewhere between one and three liters a minute. That's that's really respectable. When it's going uphill, uses a little bit more, like, four or five. But when it's just cruising, this thing barely uses fuel at all. And I also realized, too, we're going to have to do this at night. Oh, God. God. Oh, why did I let that happen? Why did I let that happen? That's like the main thing you're not supposed to let happen. But to be fair, every other time I've been through there has been with a truck that has had, you know, like a shorter load of lumber. And even though they those, those loads are top heavy, slowing down as much as I did was plenty to not have the truck flip over. Whereas with that long log trailer... Apparently, you have to slow down a lot more than I originally thought. And put it this way, I know this for the future. I know this for the future, and I will keep it very, very much in mind because it is apparently a lot more important than I originally figured it would be. So, uh, we're going to keep it in mind, like I said, a lot more than I originally did. Should be coming up on that bridge now. At least I hope I am. 35 mile an hour. Hmm. Yes, okay. So, I, I'm not... So, I wasn't crazy. Okay, I was like, I thought we were coming up on the bridge. I love how it still clips. They're like, warning, watch, you know, watch the top of your truck. Clips through, no problem. I was half worried the first time I took a truck through there that it was going to hit. And that's why they had put... Like, I was worried that that's why they had put the warnings there. Because, you know... They would make it so that your truck would hit, but took the risk, and it, it ended up being fine. Not too much further down from here. It's funny because with the way this truck is set up, like, if it just gets into a tight corner, it just kind of starts bouncing. 
It really does. It just kind of starts bouncing, and I'm not sure why it does that. It's more along the lines of, like, either the suspension is just weird, or it's just kind of how the truck wants to react. But I'm going to try and go through the water. I don't know if it'll work better or be a worse decision, but... Okay, now we can pull to the left. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And hey, once we get those rear wheels on pavement, we're golden. Once we get those rear wheels on pavement, pull, and we're good. I think. Yeah, no, we're good. Put it in high, and then back in automatic mode. It was acting like it was, da like, really badly damaged for a second. That's weird. It isn't, but it was acting like it was. So we'll get this thing to either pull or push that uh, Ford back onto its wheels. And then hopefully the whole reloading process will just involve shifting those logs around a little bit and we'll be good to go. They might even fall back into place. That's highly unlikely, but they may just fall right back into place. Which if they do that, I'm going to be really impressed. Alright, the blazer needs to move. Yeah, the blazer needs to get its way, like, get itself out of here. Pull you off to the side of the road. Back in the freight liner. All right. Let's see if we can pull you over by the trailer. We can. It's a release now. It's actually... Oh my god! It's actually sitting on top of the Freightliner. I did not Im imagine it would do that. I, I don't know why it would be... Why it would be doing that. So one log is on there presumably fine. So what we're going to have to do is move this guy down the road just a little bit and then go back and grab that other log. Like this one should be fine to get reloaded. Go back to the Freightliner. Don't really like fishing out random logs. But in this case, it looks like it's going to have to... Oh, no. No, 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 no. Where are you going? Stop. Stop. I was about to say, I really don't want to have to go down into the woods to fish that thing out. But if we have to, I understand. I just really don't want to. All right. So, let's get the crane under control so yeah it looks like reaching is not gonna happen so uh, that's not that's not brilliant um yeah that's as far as we go so now it looks like the course of action might be something even more drastic like venturing out there which i do not want to do but like, because that, if we do that, th the chances of getting this thing stuck go up by a lot. I'm sure we could pull it out with something, though. And really, this is our only way... This is our only way to get that... To get that piece of lumber back. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm ignoring an option here. Some of you guys might be thinking, what in the hell is he using the blazer for? You'll see. Or, well, hopefully it works, and then hopefully you'll see after it works. So. Oh, my God. Oh, I... Th th mm. This is even worse now. Because now we have to get the F-150 out because the blazer is very dead. So let's get the blazer out of the way because that's all it's doing now is sitting in the way. This went from what should have been routine to something way, way crazier very fast. So what I want to do, oh god, is not that. What I want to do is use the, are you freaking kidding me right now, man? Oh boy. Uh, now get the, there we go. I was like, get the rear axle up and over the thing, for god's sakes. All right. 
What I want to do is use the F-150 to push this log close enough to the freight liner that it can pick it up. And that may or may not work. It looks like... Looks like it's going to work. See, down... There we go. And, nope. Damn. All right. Okay. Well, we've got it in, in hand. So, or rather in claw. So, I don't know if the fact that it's sitting on the truck will be enough to kind of pull it out of the woods. Nope. Oh, you s damn stupid... Open the claw and get the damn thing back. So really what we're going to have to do is just keep it in the claw and drag it. Yeah, we're going to have to keep it in the claw and just just drive. God, this is such a sketchy idea. But then again, it's not far off from what we did to load this truck the first time. Actually, that's about lined up. About lined up where I want it. We just got to drive a little further forward. A little bit that way. A little bit that way. And drop it. Are you serious? It fell outside of the... Oh, this is why this gets frustrating. There we go. Now... Pack crane... Swap truck. Load, maybe? Okay! Woo! We got an achievement for that, too. I'm not sure what we got the achievement for, but I really don't care because we're on the move again with a loaded truck. Wow! And we're already up to fifth gear. This thing has crazy torque. So just a little bit farther, and we should be able to drop this off. I'm just going to have to be a lot, a lot, 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 lot more careful. Take that corner easy. Now I'm going to be all about, like, taking every corner easy with this freaking long log trailer just because of the fact that I don't want it to flip again. Can you imagine if it flipped all, literally, like, right back here on the road to the lumber mill? Like, a hundred yards from the lumber mill. Like, that would just be so bad. It was leaning. It was leaning pretty hard. Like, I was like, oh my god, I hope it didn't speak too soon on that one. The first lumber mill is done. The second lumber mill is about to get a six-point load of lumber. Sweet. All right, so now we only need one more load of lumber, and it can be a small one. And you know what I'm going to do for that? <laughs> I'm going to do it the quick way. And when I say quick way, I'm going to recover the freight liner to the garage... And I'm going to recover the freight liner to the garage and apparently run into the back of the um, the uh, the Western Star, which is perfectly normal, I assure you. Actually, you know what? Even quicker way. Since we're going to do it this way, grab the Western Star and take the Western Star to the log station. Yes, that'll be easy. Because now that we've we've done the log skitter, we've done the crane stuff... Now, really, all I'm interested in is finishing this map. So I'm going to the log station in the Western Star, which is the most capable off-road. And then I'm going to take the quickest way to get there, and we should be 100% fine. So, go straight. Yeah, why not? Go straight, throw it in high. So 
So in theory, this should be like this should be a piece of cake. Like this should be no big deal. Then again, that's theory, and theory doesn't always work the way theory is supposed to work. So uh, hopefully, we can find a good uh, a good middle ground balance between theory and uh, and, uh, and 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 I don't know practic practicality. All right, diff lock and all-wheel drive are both on. I would not take the other two back here. The Western Star I feel pretty confident with back here, but the other, actually the other two, the other three, the other three big trucks I would not take back here just surely out of concern uh, for their, like, ability to even drive. Because this thing, as you can see, it even spins occasionally, and it's got, like, all-wheel drive, diff lock, everything. And, you know, these bigger off-road tires. All right. Log station time. So, let's see. Short logs. Three points. Which is one point more than what we need, but we can't really do a two-point load. So, all right. Block post closed, as would be expected. And so now, we're going to have to do a lap, basically. Of, well, you know what? Hmm. Yeah, no, we probably are going to have to do a lap. 